Minimalism versus hoarding. ¿No has visto la, la japonesa esta? ¿Cómo se llama? Ma uh, Mary? Marie Co Mari Mari Maricondo. Maricondo. Yeah, <laughs> Did you see the World Cup Japan? Uh -huh. When they lost on their last match, uh -huh. they literally tidied up everything, cleaned up everything, and they even left a... How, how do you call the Japanese? Origamis. Oh. Ori they made out origamis, thanking everyone for giving them the chance to participate in the World Cup. That's like, so nice. Like crazy. Three here. So this is it. You guys are looking at my new place, which is a very small studio. Okay. But I guess they call this like 1.5 room type of... Uh, apartment in One Korea. Five room. In there is my little little kitchenette, which I will do a tour of today. Uh, kitchenette. Really <laughs> you ever you ever use that? Yeah, kitchenette. We use kitchenette kitchenette yeah. is like a like a room, a living room with a kitchen. No, a kitchenette just is like a tiny version of a kitchen. So maybe you have only a mini refrigerator, no oven, okay. um, not that much counter space. It's like a like a kitchen that you would get in a hotel room. Okay. This is called a kitchenette. Pero no es cocina americana, no es, no? No, es that would just be kitchen. Oh, would be just kitchen. <laughs> or open open style kitchen, no? Open kitchen. You know what's funny? They call that cocina med or americana. americana here, but in the U.S., like just we don't. Kitchen. It's just a kitchen. Some kitchens, that's the modern one, but like you know, until. Five years ago, our kitchens were closed off as separate spaces. Now all the new oh. developments, people are tearing down the walls and making it open. We just call it like a open concept, usually. Open concept. Okay. Yeah, and this usually means that it's like a living room and a kitchen, all one space. ¿Tú aquí en España te sientes más cómoda en español o, 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 o tal vez te sientes mucho más cómoda en inglés hablando? Yo me siento más cómoda en inglés, pero tampoco hay tanta diferencia no. si quieres hablar en español. No, 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 me da igual, me da igual. No es curiosidad, yeah. es por curiosidad, por, por a ver, porque a mí me gusta eh, que las personas se sientan cómodas cuando están hablando, mm -hmm. y, pero veo que en ing tu inglés es, es, es perfecto, entonces, claro, por eso yeah, I'm, I'm te sientes más English. como buscas palabras más concretas en inglés, ¿no? Para yes, a la hora de encontrar yeah. las palabras exactas, ¿no? Sí, porque todo, yo 20... 24 años, años. De, mi, de mi vida sí era y todos mis estudios son en inglés y, claro. sí. tú estudiaste eh, social work en yeah, college en mm -hmm. college yeah. claro y social work y, y pero entonces tú tienes una idea o sea tú, tú pensabas que te ibas a dedicar a writing no a... <risa> no um, no okay. I like writing um, me gusta me gustó siempre escribir como no un poquito aquí para divertirme o no sé para aclarar mi mente pero claro. no era que quería ser escritora ni nada pero al final pues, pues vas cambiando encuentras era durante la pandemia empecé bueno voy a intentar hacer un poco de freelance writing a ver si puedo ganar un poco más de dinero y eso, luego cogí más trabajos y tal, y cuando dejé de trabajar, que estaba trabajando en un instituto aquí en Málaga, pues entonces... Dije, so, what's the most interesting piece of writing that you got the chance to, to get your hands on? I've written about everything. People ask me, what do you write about? And I'm, I say, like, everything but, but, under the sun. Is it something, <laughs> like, is it something that they, they give you? Or they say, okay, listen, you think of something, you write about that. No, so usually they give it to me. So I'll have different clients and then the client will say, I need an article about this topic. Okay. Or that's, that's I've worked nice. with like a, I don't know, a YouTube channel. Like I need a script about this okay. or yeah, or a podcast. I need notes about this audio or something like that. I think we're we're very money oriented, but it's funny because I didn't, I never considered myself to be super American or super capitalistic. Yeah. Capitalist. Yeah, capitalist. Yeah. Until I uh, came to Spain, and then as the years progress, I'm extremely like I'm a huge capitalist. Okay. You know, I mean, in the broad sense of the of the term, right? Like the more that I think about it, and you know, I love Spain, but no offense to to your yeah. systems, but in my opinion, like I see the way that people here just want everyone wants to be funcionario right like that's that's the dream like Listen, that, what is the spanish whole dream conversation right there. yeah that's, that's like two hour yeah. conversation i'll really get into that but yeah. you know everyone just wants like i want a job where they can't fire me and i can be there for the next 40 years yeah. and they pay me every month like enough leave to two, live, leave at two yeah, leave, right <laughs> and that's great i think like i think americans a lot of us want Like at the end of the day, you should want freedom, right? You're, if we want more money, it should be so that you have more time to do what you really like, yeah, yeah. in my opinion. Um, but yeah, some people do get caught up in the U.S. and work 
I think just get obsessed with getting more money to spend on like things that don't really matter. Whereas I see like in Spain, maybe people have less money and things, but they're more social. But I definitely am, am much more American where like I like now this writing job, I'm I have American clients. They pay me American money. Like I'm still not working enough hours where I'm making an American salary. You know, I couldn't live off what I'm doing in the U.S. Yeah. But I'm like, if I want to go back and, and make I'm tempted. I'm really tempted to go back because, yeah, like I want more money, but it's to do things like to so establish you are tempted. myself. You are tempted. I'm so tempted. I'm like really debating it recently. And um, one of the most special things about this place is that I have only moved here. It's been this is what day two of having moved in. This lady is American. Huh? Yeah. Station, but I only had two suitcases and one backpack. That sounds like it. And um, it only cost me less than um, two hundred dollars extra. She's American. Yeah. Like less than two hundred dollars to get settled in completely. Yeah, to get settled in. Esa es buena. Eso es. En español se dice. En, en, joder. En español se dice cuando tú te te quedas en un sitio, ¿no? Acomodas. Acomodarse. Eh, a ver, to get settled in completely. Acoplarse, acomodarse, sí, cuando tú te quedas en un sitio llano y te y te lo haces tuyo. Tú haces ya tuyo el sitio, pones todas las cosas como tú quieres y tal, ¿no? Yo diría como eso, acomodarse o acoplarse, ¿no? I have already made two meals in this house. Uh, everything's already kind of streamlined and Ah, mira, everything's kind of streamlined. One of the best things about being a So, a ver esta, ¿cómo la traducirías tú? House. Esto uh, de... Everything's already kind of streamlined. Every, everything's kind of streamlined. Eso como... Uh, would you explain that in English? And uh, maybe I can find a right translation yeah, in Spanish? Yeah, so, I guess everything is already in its place or organized in a way that it flows. Exactly. Es como, es como que ya está todo ya en su sitio como si fuera un escaparate, ¿no? Como si fuera un escaparate, like a okay, shop. Escaparate. Escaparate es like a shop, uh, like a shop, the, the, what you see on a, on a, on a shop, uh, outside. Oh, like the window? Shop yeah, the window, window shop, a okay. window shop, yeah, yeah. Como si fuera un escaparate, está todo como en su sitio, ¿no? Como, vale, está todo aquí, 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 aquí. Yeah, que, que todo fluye. Todo fluye. Que no tienes que... No tienes que buscar nada, sí. está todo en su sitio. ¿no? Exacto. One of the best things about being a minimalist is that you have so little stuff and so little also, stuff. Um, your lifestyle is so compact that you are, have more freedom like in your mind to be more creative and to create yeah, these routines I agree with that. Uh, right on the go and things like that. Okay, yeah, this is, that's interesting stuff, I think. Uh, it's true. I, I'm sort of a, I would consider myself sort of a minimalist myself because... I, I can mean, see it. Yeah, <laughs> because... No, no I'm, well, this is because of the podcast, but um, right now, on like... This this table and this this bench is foldable. They are foldable. I just put them together. I put them on a room, and all these cameras now go out. This this TV goes out because I actually install that thing just for the podcast because that the thing goes up the ceiling and you don't see it. It's on the ceiling. I was I was thinking so because I was like, if not, you'd hit your head every time you go into that hallway. <laughs> I yeah. was like, I assume it goes up. That's yeah, cool. Yeah. That's a good setup. That's yeah. an arm because you guys don't see it, but uh, the TV is set up on an arm uh, that's foldable and it can be f uh, folded up to the ceiling, no? Mm -hmm. Folded up yep. to the ceiling. Uh, but literally, uh, I don't have um, almost no furniture. Uh, I have almost no furniture because I, I don't know. I, I, I actually have only the furniture that I need to keep the stuff in. Like that's that, that, that furniture right there. But like I don't have a couch. Yeah. As you, as you see, because uh, usually, like I'm, I do my social life outside, outdoors. I, I prefer being outdoors. I just do like maybe if people come over, we have lunch or whatever. But usually with this table, it's enough. Yeah. But like, uh, and usually I feel very comfortable on the chair because mm -hmm. I'm on the on the computer anyway. So this is like my living room, bedroom. Well, not bedroom, but office. The, the office, yeah. <laughs> So, I was like, hopefully not bad, or hopefully not you don't bad. sleep in that chair. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, yeah, you get used to it. And because that's another thing in Spain, I don't know if in the States it's so common, but in Spain, every home needs to have a couch. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, the U.S. is like the same. Like, it's... it's a... It'd be strange if you didn't have a couch in the U.S. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. People think it's weird mm -hmm. not to have a couch. Actually, my job, they laugh at me. Uh, some, you know, they joke around. They joke around about that. They say that they, they always, they're always saving up to buy me a couch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this lady is pretty much showcasing 
the lifestyle, the lifestyle of a, of a minimalist, no? Yeah, so I'm really excited. Okay. Um, and one of the funniest things... Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. She, she brought up the fact... Ella, lo que ha traído es el hecho de que el tener pocas cosas te permite centrarte en tu lado más creativo, ¿no? En tu uh -huh. lado más creativo y en centrarte en las cosas que realmente importan. Porque a veces cuando pierdes tiempo buscando cosas te quitan energía para hacer cosas más productivas en tu vida.